We all love to travel through the skies. Some of us do it for fun, some for work, and some of us do it because we're the head of state, governing the lives of millions of people, or some equally frivolous reason like that. And because we as a species have all agreed that squeezing about a hundred people into a tube with wings and propelling them several thousand feet in the air is the most efficient means of international travel. Today we're going to be talking about expensive, luxurious private jets. But not just any private jets, we'll be looking at some of the private jets of the richest world leaders. If you've ever had to wake up by 4 in the morning, pester your friend to give you a ride to the airport, wade through tedious lines, only to have your flight delayed for three hours, you probably don't fancy commercial airlines too much. Neither does your president, prime minister, or benevolent leader. Trust me, you're never going to be sitting beside them in coach or first class for that matter. Here are some of the most luxurious private planes commissioned by world leaders for security reasons. Wink, wink. So without further ado, here are some of the most expensive public planes that you can't fly in. Number six. Xi Jinping's Boeing 747, worth $250 million. China is one of the fastest growing economies in the world and is already the second largest economy on the planet. So one would normally think China's head of state would be styling on everyone with their governmental sky entourage. But surprisingly, unlike his colleagues who have multiple airplanes, the general secretary of the Communist Party of China, Xi Jinping, does not own a personal aircraft. But don't get it twisted, this doesn't mean he's taking the train either. Xi Jinping uses two Boeing 747s 47 400s belonging to Air China Airlines for his government visits and business trips. The value of these planes at the time of construction was approximately $250 million each. When the planes aren't being used to fly around precious cargo, both of the airliners are used for regular passengers. However, as soon as Xi Jinping plans to step foot on the airplane, it's carefully examined by the leader's security service, which, as you may imagine, takes a few weeks. They aren't very eager to reenact the movie Air Force One. The planes don't just get examined though, they're also sent for refitting, which involves having some of the cabin's seats dismantled and replaced with a spacious living room, a bedroom, and an office. Specific details of the manipulations are not known and are probably kept secret due to the whole Air Force One thing I talked about. Great movie, by the way. Very fun. Devastating if it happened for real. After the government leaders are done with the airplanes, they are given back to Air China and returned to their original state, and its regular passengers can feel happy flying in what must be the safest plane in all of China. So what does the interior of a passenger plane deemed worthy to carry the head of state look like? Well, I could easily show you what the inside of a Boeing 747 looks like from a quick Google search, but that's not what we're here for, is it? Unfortunately, there aren't many sightings of the president's altered Air China Boeing 747. The few official photographs and sources tell us that the presidential aircraft is far from the luxurious interiors you're going to be seeing on this list, but it is more austere and businesslike. Number 5. Angela Merkel's Conrad Adenauer, worth 300 million dollars. This list wouldn't be complete without Germany's very own Iron Lady, Chancellor Angela Merkel, and her famous aircraft charmingly referred to as the Conrad Adenauer. Some of these aircraft include a Bombardier Global 5000, valued at around 70 million dollars, and two Airbus A319-133X CJs, each costing more than 150 million dollars. On top of that, she has a Eurocopter AS532, used primarily for shorter flights, or so they say. I just think it's impossible not to look badass hanging off the side of a helicopter, and Merkel probably agrees. The Conrad Adenauer used to live its life as a boring passenger plane, working around the clock carrying regular people around. That is until 2011 when it was transferred from Lufthansa Airline to the special unit of the military's administration dedicated to government transport. Now it's a fancy government plane with bragging rights. So what does the interior of a fancy German government plane look like? Well, after numerous remodeling and reconstruction projects, the aircraft was transformed into a comfortable modern, and secure personal aircraft for Angela Merkel and her advisors. The Conrad Adenauer could accommodate approximately 335 passengers back in its commercial days. These days, its passenger capacity is reduced to 150, but that's just to make space for all the awesomeness. The Conrad has apartments with showers, bedrooms, offices, a conference hall with video communication equipment, and a completely soundproof room for clandestine negotiations. And to top it all off, it comes with additional fuel tanks as well, allowing for non stop flights up to 13,500 kilometers, meaning you can get from Berlin to Washington, Beijing, Rio de Janeiro, or Merkel's favorite holiday destination, Italy, in one go. Number 4. Saudi Royal Family's Boeing 747, worth $485 million. When it comes to ostentatious displays of wealth, very few people can do it like the Saudi Royal Family can. Together, they have amassed a fortune of about $1 trillion and a fleet of aircraft as well. Airplanes like the 
Airbus A321, a Hawker Siddeley 125, and the crown jewel of their collection, an absolutely massive Boeing 747, one of the largest planes in the market turned into a private jet. The Crown Prince Al-Walid bin Talal bought the Boeing 747 in 2003 for about $485 million, a purchase that definitely turned a few heads back then. But purchasing such a massive behemoth wasn't enough for Prince Al-Walid. He had it remodeled and the interior completely overhauled. This was no passenger plane anymore. He had successfully turned it into a flying palace, complete with a throne room. Honestly though, who really needs those reclining chairs in first class? Sign me up for a throne any day. Originally constructed to seat 400 people, this plane had more than enough space to cram every inch of it with luxury. The customized 747 features multiple beautifully designed bedrooms, sparkling bathrooms, a dining table for 14 people, and lounge areas all with a beautiful gold trim to them. A plane clearly built with the most governmental purposes in mind. Number 3. Vladimir Putin's Flying Kremlin, worth $500 million Even though Vladimir Putin has shown a fondness for driving Formula One cars, tanks, and horses, unfortunately none of them can go very far, very fast. That's the job of his flagship aircraft, the Russian-made IL-96-300PU, or the Flying Kremlin for short. It is a wide-bodied, long-haul airliner, easily distinguishable from the passenger model. Note, this plane wasn't made to take just anyone on holiday, it's for transporting special goods. That's why the Russian government installed all sorts of advanced communication systems on board, allowing the aircraft to act as a management center capable of promptly commanding Russian troops and responding to any unexpected conflict. It'll be like Putin never left the office. The Flying Kremlin stretches to an impressive 65 meters, with a wingspan that exceeds 65 meters, and is capable of a max cruising speed of 900 kilometers per hour, which is nothing to scoff at. This is a presidential plane after all, so getting there in one piece is a top priority. So, of course you know the plane is equipped with all kinds of security doodahs. The Flying Kremlin is covered by the pilots of the Russian Aerospace Forces Special Squad, protecting it both inside and outside of Russian territory. The aircraft has several layers of protection against potential attacks from land or from the air, from space too, probably. It has an automated system for jamming and disorienting radars, as well as its own anti-aircraft defense system. And well, I'd love to tell you more, but further details on the plane's security aren't something the Russian government is looking to discuss with the public. The beautiful interior, on the other hand, I can talk about. The cabin is lavishly decorated with tapestries and gold accents. It has a neoclassical feel to the interior design. It comes equipped with a spacious office, a bedroom, and has been fully customized to allow the president to work, travel, and rest in comfort. Well, except for the gym. Yeah, this presidential airplane comes with a fully equipped gym, because there's nothing like working up a sweat before the next diplomatic conference. The beautiful interior was designed by Ivan Gluzinov, the son of revered Russian artist Ilya Gluzinov. So looking this good wasn't by accident. But don't think you can get one over on Putin just because he has a favorite aircraft. Once an international flight is announced, four separate planes are prepared for departure. The specific plane Putin will actually be on is between him and the Russian armed forces. So it's probably a bad idea to try to sneak on board to get his autograph, that and a couple other insignificant reasons. Number 2. Sergio Mattarella's Air Fleet, worth $600 million the Airbus A340-500 from Etihad Airways is the primary aircraft of the Italian government. Officially rented in 2015, the plane stood idle in its hangar for several months before being used by the Italian presidency. The reason why is pretty unique, as the Italian Air Force had no pilots licensed to operate the plane and regular pilots weren't allowed to fly heads of state. It had to sit there waiting for someone that could take it for a spin. It's not all bad. The Italian government also has three A319CJs in its service. Service, it isn't the largest aircraft and only carries up to 30 passengers at a time, meaning the three aircraft are often used simultaneously to transport President Sergio Mattarella and his escorts. Apparently, the interior of the Airbus A340-500 hasn't changed much compared to the standard interior of Etihad Airways, although it's now equipped with a separate room for VIP passengers. The interior of the Airbus A319-CJ, however, is divided into four zones, a conference room, a comfortable seating area for high-ranking officials, 
officials, a passenger lounge, and a seating area for service personnel. Estimating the cost of the planes the Italian president uses brings it to about $600 million. A new Airbus A340-500 would go for about $262 million, and an Airbus A319-CJ costs around $90 million, which means Italy's trio adds a total of $270 million to the cost of the presidential fleet. A Dassault Falcon 900EX costs about $43 million, and the addition of medical and emergency equipment has probably boosted the overall cost, bringing us up to about $600 million. Number 1. Air Force One, worth $5.3 billion? Pretty much everyone knows what Air Force One is by now. Decades of American pop culture has ensured that. Thanks to its popularity, though, there are quite a lot of myths surrounding the plane. For example, did you know the aircraft comes equipped with emergency escape pods? And that the aircraft is equipped with near-futuristic refrigerators that cost over $20 million? One of those two is a lie. Anyway, here's some objective truth for you. Air Force One isn't any particular aircraft, it's a call sign used to refer to any aircraft that has a sitting president on board. But that doesn't mean the president is going to be walking by you in first class either. Even though it's just a call sign, there is a specific plane the president uses. Well, two identical planes to be exact. That's the blue and white Boeing 747-200BS jumbo jet. The aircraft is intended to function as a second command center for the president, so on top of it being able to refuel mid-flight, it also comes equipped with a lot of amenities. It's got two kitchens capable of providing food for up to 100 people at a time. If you think that's a lot, I've got news for you. The plane carries enough food for 2,000 meals just in case. Got a plan for a crash landing on a desert island, I guess. The plane is also set up with onboard medical facility, a fully stocked pharmacy, and an on-call doctor, and stocks of blood that matches the president's taste. The plane comes with plenty of defense capabilities as well to nobody's surprise. These include a radar jammer, flares to disrupt heat-seeking missiles, and its onboard electronics are designed to withstand an electromagnetic pulse, and a bunch more the government is not about to tell you. And if through all this the aircraft still encounters a problem, it's never going to be stranded. It's equipped with an impressive amount of communications equipment, including two-way radios, 85 separate phone lines, and even a fax machine, allowing for constant communication with the ground and whoever still uses the fax machine, I guess. As you can imagine, all this probably costs a few pennies to buy and operate, and boy are those pennies pretty. One report by the American government said the aircraft costs 206000 $337 for every hour it's in operation. In fact, Joe Biden will be the first president to use the new Air Force One, which is an upgrade to the old system that will cost an estimated $5.3 billion, all to create and run an aircraft sure to increase the property value of wherever it lands. And number zero, Prince Alwaleed bin Talal's elusive flying palace, worth over $600 million. Known as the Flying Palace, the private jet was conceived and ordered by Saudi Arabian Prince Alwaleed bin Talal. Wow. Big surprise, Saudi Arabia landed itself twice on this list, I know. The prince placed an order for the first VIP version of the Airbus's double-decker A380 airplane, a plane that would have gone for roughly $400 million and an extra $200 million to turn the world's largest passenger plane into the world's most luxurious private jet. In 2007, the prince decided to add yet another massive aircraft to his collection. And it wasn't just going to be any aircraft. This time, it was going to be the most luxurious aircraft ever owned by any head of state. There are plans to install a concert hall, a car garage, a Turkish bath, a prayer room. Oh yeah, in case you missed it, I did say car garage. There were plans to install one on the plane. The prince wasn't just going to be flying in style, he would be driving off the plane in style too. The plane was to have multiple bedrooms, all with ensuite bathrooms, dining areas, a lounge, and a meeting room. Because after all, this was going to be a business plane. Unfortunately, these plans never really came to fruition. $600 million was never spent on an Airbus A380 and the floating palace was eventually sold off. Pour one out, boys. If you enjoyed this video, comment below and do leave us a like. Check out the King Luxury channel for more videos all about luxury. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.